Hey guys, welcome to Coding Box Automation Lab. This is Sherpo. From this lecture, we're going to set a brand new tutorial, which is TypeScript in Cypress. So in our previous tutorials, we have seen all of our project, all the uh, tutorials is based on JavaScript or with the Cypress. And that's what the default nature for Cypress projects, because in Cypress only support JavaScript. Then, you know, why TypeScript? What is or even TypeScript? So nowadays you will, you will hear a lot of company, they require TypeScript skill for JavaScript automation project, even though you know, the, the JavaScript is the default language, supporting language for Cypress, but it's still the one TypeScript and they build the project based on the TypeScript. However, still you need to know the JavaScript. So let's see that, you know, what is TypeScript? So TypeScript is an open source object oriented programming language developed and maintained by Microsoft. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript that compiles to plain JavaScript, which runs anywhere, like in a browser for front end or for the back end of a server, it's run on Node.js, like JavaScript runs. So here is a TypeScript official website. If you go to their, their site, you will see there is some definition, some introduction in regards to TypeScript. Example, TypeScript is a strongly typed programming language that builds on JavaScript, giving you better tooling at any scale. What does it mean? It means, you know, TypeScript basically, you know, build on to make it strong the JavaScript and overcome JavaScript some limitation so that you can build your project, very complex project with the JavaScript. And you can see here is a few more definition in regards TypeScript. You know, here is the TypeScript, you know, the version that you can, you know, have right now, it's a 4.5. So let's get back to the introductory part of the TypeScript. So next we'll see that why TypeScript is required. This is the most important thing that you need to know. So as we said, TypeScript, it's superset of JavaScript. You know, JavaScript is a, it means JavaScript is a well established in the market for a long, long time to build both client and server side application using different framework like Angular React JS, which is a client side application, Node JS or backend server side application. But the problem in JavaScript is a dynamic programming language with no type system, which creates some sort of problem in regards code quality, readability, or refactoring code base when you try to build any complex project or application. What does I mean? No type system. Let's see a few examples. Okay. Let's go to a blank you know, browser site where we're going to, you know, assign any value or to a variable with some specific data. Like say example, let's declare a variable for a, and then let's define, assign some value a equals to 10. So it's no problem. It can define a equals to any stream even like box, and also there is no problem. So you see, when you declare a variable bar, and you can assign whether it's string or integer, and 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 this JavaScript is not giving any error, and it's 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 fine with this. So a JavaScript is a node type, you know, type system language, because it's allow to assign any data type to a variable, which is some sort of problem. When you build a very complex, you want to make sure, you know, you are assigning 
data to a specific uh, variable, it is based on specific data type. It's not an open. So anybody can, you know, by mistake or anybody can, you know, assign different data type to the same variable, then it will make a big noise. So this is number one problem in JavaScript. And uh, let's see, the second problem is with the function. Let's create a simple function, give a name, say, addition. And let's pass to our argument, say, I'll say A, B. Okay. And then let's return, return. So let's return, I would say, let's make it simple A plus B. Okay. So we're returning just the addition of A and B. So now let's call this function addition. So when you call the function, you know, you can pass two argument, uh, you know, two parameter value instead of uh, A and B, one and four, which is five, it's no problem, which is being good. So what if I can return a, a, a calling a addition again and pass only one value. And, and now you can see when I pass one for argument A, and there's nothing for argument B, what JavaScript does is automatically replace, you know, place undefined, undefined for it, for B, for argument B. And so now A plus argument, I mean, one plus argument, one plus undefined, it's returning you non-value, which is a problem. And, and what if even, you know, I, or like in addition, and I pass, you know, extra argument value, say one, three, five, which is not matching with that over here. So it is also JavaScript is still allowing you to pass, you know, non-matching argument value to a function. So now what's really happening over here? I pass one, three, five. So it's adding one and three for A and B, and it's ignoring the five. Okay, so first of all, it shouldn't allow you even to, you know, to pass another extra non-matching argument value. Unlike other languages, JavaScript is still allowing you, which is, which is also a problem. And the third issue, let's, let's also create an object. So the third issue, it's with an object. I'm going to create an object. I'll give the name person and even in person, and it has a two parameter and passive first name, the value is shareable, and the last name is a slot. So now, if I call the object person, you will see it's returning, you know, first name and last name, which is good. Now, what happened if someone on your team and, and want to add, you know, whether the reason, whatever the reason, wants to add another parameter over here, like say person dot edge is another parameter equals to 35. Okay. So adding another parameter to the same person object 35. So now let's call the object person. It's returning first name, last name, and also edge. So what's really happened when you create a very complex project with the JavaScript with multiple team member in the, in the project, you know, and different people, they could have a different logic and, and, you know, any person, any, anybody from your team can add extra parameter, any parameter to your object and JavaScript is not preventing, but this could make a big problem for a complex project. Okay. So because it's losing, you know, it's losing the object. You know, the object's structure, the, the actual structure for person object, it's a first name and last name, only two parameter, but Java is allowing you to add more parameter to the same object. So it's breaking the, you know, it, it's real structure. So that's another issue with the JavaScript. And there is a few more issues. So those are the few example, the problem with the JavaScript. So let's get back to our slide now.
Now, and now we know, like, you know, the that script comes to the picture to resolve all the JavaScript issues. So the next question is, would be, do we still need JavaScript? So if TypeScript resolve the issues, like we're facing uh, with the JavaScript, so do we still need JavaScript? Yes, we need it because the browser, so the browser only support the JavaScript. So there is no alternative and we're stuck on this issue. So we still, we have to use the type, uh, JavaScript where we have to depend on the JavaScript to build our, you know, client side application or, 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 you know, server side application and uh, to resolve or overcome the JavaScript limitation, we need to bring up the TypeScript. So that's why TypeScript is getting more acceptable in the market nowadays. Okay. Let's see now that's created, you know, some, how to use the TypeScript. The TypeScript code written in a file with dot .es extension. Then we need a compiler. So when you're going to work on the TypeScript, the TypeScript need a compiler to compile that TypeScript or that .ts file to plain JavaScript. So a TypeScript file can be written in any code editor like VS Code or Eclipse we use. So we can use any one of them as you, you know, feel comfortable. The command to compile TypeScript file that, you know, the TSC, then the file name of the TypeScript, which is the, you know, file name .ts. So TSC will compile or convert your whatever the file over here to js file so here you can see example your file that's file is the demo.ts and to compile it you have to type tsc file name then it will convert to demo.js and after that you will execute your js file as we used to do so you can run your script the js script like the regular way and the way we used to do for our, you know, any other project. So this is the way to use the TypeScript. So you are not going to use TypeScript directly, not going to run the TypeScript directly before that. You have to compile it so that your, your, it can convert to JS file and then your JS file will talk with the browser directly, you know, for your client side application. Okay. So next see the features of TypeScript. So TypeScript compiler can be installed on any operating system such as Mac, Windows, Linux. So it allows cross-platform operation. So that's one of the, you know, the benefits or features of TypeScript. The next is TypeScript allow like class, interface, and modules. So it is object-oriented programming language too. So yeah, if you have an idea for object-oriented programming languages like C++ or Java, it is more close like, you know, that kind of object-oriented programming language because it allows class, it allows interface, okay? So TypeScript uses static typing and helps type checking at compile time. As a result, you can find errors while writing code without running this script. This is one of the big benefits of TypeScript. So you can find the error when you compile it before you, when you coding to code it, when you write the code, right? Before, before you even execute the code. Okay. And the lastly, that script also allows to manipulate the DOM structure to adding or removing any limit. Okay. So those are the, you know, the main features of that script. So. In our next upcoming lecture, we'll see some of the difference between the TypeScript and the JavaScript, even though you have now, you know, some sort of idea, but we'll see structure base as well as, you know, then we'll create some simple project based on TypeScript and we'll see how we create the TypeScript file, compile it, you know, then it's run or execute JavaScript file and, and how it works, your, your project, end to end project. So. All that it will be series of lecture to cover all the idea, like your 
Cypress project based on the TypeScript. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot. Stay tuned. Have a good one. Bye-bye.